Welcome to SEM Connections introduction into IBP inventory. For this series we'll be talking about the IBP inventory basics followed by an explanation of the baseline model that we'll be using in our demonstration. Then we will have that IBP inventory demonstration in the system followed by a section we like to call real questions real answers and then finally suggested next steps. But again, in this particular video, we'll only be talking about the IBP inventory basics and the baseline model. Before we begin, it's important to understand the basics of SAP's IBP toolset. It's also important to understand the basics of SAP's IBP SNOP module. There are several videos out on our SEM Connections YouTube channel that should bring you up to speed pretty quickly. These aren't requirements, but it's certainly helpful to understand where IBP inventory fits into the larger scheme of things and it'll just answer a lot of questions that you'll inevitably have. So first, the inventory basics. It's important to understand the basic process flow um, and where inventory optimization fits into the process. In our example, what we thought was the easiest to understand, again, your business may be different or you may want to do it a different way, but for us the easiest way was to first figure out the forecast, come up with a consensus demand, then do inventory optimization, and then calculate your supply. It's kind of splitting SNOP in half, um, and that's probably something that people aren't used to or comfortable with, but we just felt with inventory optimization, calculating your safety stock, that's going to be a requirement placed on the shop floor that you'll want to include before you actually start cal calculating your supply and figuring out your capacity constraints and things like that. Again, all of these bullet points we could probably talk about for hours, but I just wanted to give you a high level understanding of where the inventory optimization fit into the grain scheme of things. So as far as basic definitions go, this is kind of your crash course on inventory management and to get you on the same terminology that SAP uses for IBP inventory. First concept you need to understand is periods or time periods. They're typically weekly or monthly, but can also be aggregated to a quarterly or yearly level. Daily is not recommended at this level. And for this example that we're using, the periods will be weekly. Safety stock is a statistically calculated value for each period based on several key inputs. It's calculated for each period, so it could change over time. And for this example, key inputs are going to be forecast, forecast accuracy, and service level. In the actual IBP inventory tool, there's probably 20 or 30 different inputs, but again, we're trying to keep the example as simple as possible. Cycle stock is a concept that may be new to a lot of people, but it's essentially physical inventory that is consumed during the period to fulfill orders. Cycle stock is replenished at the beginning of the next period where the cycle just begins all over again. For this example, the beginning cycle stock should be equal to the forecast and deplete to zero by the end of the period. For pipeline stock, that's inventory that's been ordered in one period but not yet physically received. Uh, pipeline stock converts to cycle stock and potentially safety stock if it was used at the beginning of a new period and in this example the periods between replenishment is one. For target inventory stock that should be inventory that is at the beginning of each period and includes safety stock and cycle stock and pipeline stock. For this example target inventory is forecast plus the safety stock. So those of you who saw our videos on IBP SNOP, this baseline model will look relatively familiar to you. Again, our hope was just to come up with a model that showed all the functionality that IBP inventory has to offer while at the same time keeping it simple enough that you can keep up with the calculations and follow along easily and not just be overwhelmed by a bunch of numbers. So in this case, we have a third party supplier that makes all of the components. They supply all those components to two manufacturing plants. One plant is called Northeast, one is called Southwest, plant 201, 202 respectively. Those two plants both make products 1, 2, and 3. 
and they supply to four warehouses conveniently north, east, south, and west. Uh, they will, those warehouses will distribute those products, not manufacture, but just distribute products one, two, and three to their respective customer group. So northeast, southwest, C101 through C104. As far as the baseline values are concerned, products one through three have a 5,000 forecast from each customer to their respective warehouse for each period. The service level is 95% with the exception of the West which is 99%. The forecast error is 20% across the board with the exception of the South customer group which is 25%. And due to that 5,000 demand coming from the customer you're going to have dependent demand or propagated demand of 10,000 for each product for each manufacturing site. Again, let me stop right here. These numbers I'm going through pretty quickly. You'll probably just want to come back to this slide and when you're going through the demo to understand the data better, but this is just kind of a quick and easy way of explaining the, the data values that you're going to see. The component demand is um, based upon the fact that for product one, um, for every one each of product one I make, I need two of component one and three of component four. Uh, component 2 is used exclusively in product 2, component 3 is used exclusively in product 3. It's component 4 that's shared all the way across. So in this case, since I want to make 20,000 eaches of product 1, I'm going to need 40,000 of component 1. Same story for product 2 and 3. And then as far as component 4 is concerned, since it is 3x, I want to make 60,000 units of products 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, I need 180,000 of component 4. The PBR, or periods between replenishment, is going to be 1, with the exception of product 2, where it will actually span 2 periods. The lead time, in this case the transportation lead time, the lead time between the warehouse and the manufacturing plant is going to be 0, with the exception of product 3, where in that case it is 1. To IBP's SNOP, the IBP inventory module offers functionality that will do some heavy duty calculations. Um, in the SNOP case, it was calculating supply and resource constraints, etc. But in inventory, it's all about inventory optimization. And there's two concepts single level and multi level optimization. So I'm going to try to walk through that. Um, you may need to watch the video a couple times for it to all make sense. Um, and then we'll come back at it again with a demo, but I think this is, will be useful to understand and explain what IBP inventory is trying to do. So for single level optimization, that is essentially talking about this concept that um, you're only trying to optimize inventory at one location. So if we go to our data model and we just focused on customer group north and that north warehouse, if we were going to optimize that inventory level based on these values, so we just covered the fact that the forecast was 5,000, forecast error was 20%, service level was 95%, um, remember the different service level was at a different location, we're just talking about location north right now, lead time was 001 and PBR was 121 respectively for those products. What's going to happen is with single level optimization is you're going to go calculate your safety stock and um, again the calculation of safety stock in IBP inventory could be three hours of videos. Um, but suffice it to say that there are several inputs, um, these five being the biggies but not certainly not the only inputs into calculating the safety stock. And so single level optimization saying okay based on your forecast and your accuracy and the service level you need to have a safety stock of 1687 for that product. And because your PBR is 2 instead of 1 for product 2, you're going to need a little bit more safety stock. And you might need a little less more, a little less safety stock uh, with your lead time um, because your lead time is longer and your PBR is 1. Okay? And so in this case with our 95% service level, that's what you would get. But the challenge with single level optimization is the fact that it doesn't take into account the manufacturing 
site and what inventory levels they need to have. And so it's assuming that in order to make this work and have a 95% service level at the warehouse, I'm going to have to have a 99% service level at the manufacturing site. In other words, I'm going to have a certain safety stock at the warehouse, but then when I run out or when I need to make an order to that manufacturing site, they have to supply it. They have to be able to supply it in order for me to make my 95% service level. So it's not just calculating what my safety stock is at a warehouse, but also what's going to be the safety stock at the plant. And in this particular case, if I had to have a 99% service level based on those values, I would need to have the safety stock that you see now, 2360, 3324, 3341. And then that target inventory um, um, would also be bumped up because of that safety stock. Total cost to me in this this very basic um, scenario would be $91,887. And that's based on an inventory holding cost at the warehouse of $2 per unit per period and a $1 inventory holding cost uh, per unit per period. So that's single level optimization. What happens in multi-level optimization is that they still want to maintain the same values are going into it. They still want to maintain a 95% service level. But in this case, the service level at the manufacturing site can be anywhere between 50 and 99%. And the reason for that is because statistically, and this is a fundamental concept in IBP inventory, is that statistically the odds of two things happening are a lot lower than if those things happened separately. So in other words, a customer calling the warehouse on the phone and asking for inventory that's not there, um, that's one event that could happen. But then at that same time, that warehouse needing to call the manufacturing site on the phone saying, I'm out of inventory and you need to provide it to me, that happening at the same time are two occurrences that can be statistically measured. And therefore, what multi-level optimization does in a very short two-minute explanation is that it optimizes and figures out what that service level at um, the manufacturing site needs to be based on a whole bunch of calculations. So as a matter of fact, in this particular calculation based on this data, the um, multi-level optimization will actually come back with that range, 64.9% to 85.8% based on different products in order to maintain still that 95% service level in front of the customer, but um, balance it, pooling the risk. So in this case, the DC um, actually had safety stock that went up. Um, not by much, uh, but it went up for product one, you can see, by 282 units. And the reason for that is also that this heuristic or optimizer will sit down and say, well, if I put a little, and again, this is oversimplification, but it's saying, if I put a little bit more inventory closer to the customer, even though it's more expensive to hold inventory there, that's going to balance out or pool the risk better um, and allow me to have a lower total inventory level at the manufacturing site. So if I were to calculate what was needed at the manufacturing site, you can see that the safety stock basically plummets. I mean, it, it goes down to an extremely low level. Um, in, in the case of product one, it goes um, down 1838 to 522 eaches. And then the total cost of that, if you're putting it in terms of dollars, is 85,431. And then again, that's based on a $2 inventory holding cost at the DC and a $1 uh, holding cost at the manufacturing plant. And that equates to about 7%. Should you apply that 70% to 7% to your business? Absolutely not. These numbers are completely made up and just for illustrative purposes. You would need to go in and do a proof of concept and run some real data against these numbers to figure out what your precise uh, savings potential is. But again, it's just to illustrate the point that, and to put it in dollar terms so people can understand what that means with the safety stock going down at a manufacturing site but going up slightly at the DC. And again, in the next video, we'll be going through an awful lot um, of the demo and, and seeing how these calculations are made.